Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Youssef. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa directed to inventory Bahraini students abroad to evacuate them. He directed the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Ministry of Education to coordinate to develop a quick repatriation plan and ensure the students return to the kingdom as soon as possible. His Royal Highness also directed to increase in inception campaigns and inspection campaigns to control prices and combat monopolistic practices and citizen deception by manipulating prices. He instructed to prolong the shelf life of strategic food supplies to ensure their availability in the market. The first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council of Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, chaired an online meeting with officials of the youth and sports sector, which comes following the directives of the representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor and President of the SCYS, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. The Secretary General of the SCYS, Sheikh Salman bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, the Minister of Youth and Sports, Ayman Lam Ayyad, the Assistant Secretary General of the CYS and member of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, Dr. Abdul Rahman Sadiq Askar, the Secretary General of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, Mohammed Hassan Al Nusuf, and the Sports Consultant of the CYS President, Mohammed Hamad Al Ajmi, participated in the meeting. His Highness Sheikh Khalid hailed the efforts of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, through his continuous work and follow up on all the developments of the coronavirus. His Highness affirmed that the continuity of efforts to implement the directives of His Highness Sheikh Nasser to protect the community and increase awareness on the importance of following measures for protection from the virus. He hailed the athletes following the precautionary measures, which affirms that the responsibility is shared by all. His Highness commended the decision of the International Olympic Committee and the cooperation of the Japanese government to postpone the Olympic Games to 2021, asserting that the decision comes in line with the interests of all. The officials praised the follow-up of His Highness Sheikh Khalid and all the coronavirus developments which supports the directives of His Highness Sheikh Nasser to take further precautionary measures that contribute to protecting athletes. The Speaker of the Representatives Council for the Yazena held a meeting in the presence of a number of ministers to discuss the plan of evacuating citizens abroad. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif Zayani, praised the efforts of the executive and legislative authorities as well as the cooperation of the people of Bahrain to implement this plan. The Speaker said that the plan follows a preventive measure to ensure the safety of all and goes in line with the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to combat COVID-19. Zain al Anas Zayani praised the efforts of the government led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, as well as the efforts of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and Team Bahrain in this regard. They condemned the irresponsible measures taken by Qatar towards Bahrainis and affirmed the strong unity of Bahrainis and their ability to overcome all challenges. Zayani added that the authorities are working working with concerned bodies to facilitate the return of Bahrainis from Iran through direct flights. The Minister of Health, Faiq al Saleh, praised the role of the medical cadres in fighting COVID-19 and added that the staff capacity has been increased. She also praised the awareness of the people of Bahrain and their cooperation in fighting the virus. The Chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Saleh, chaired the weekly meeting, who expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, for their efforts in ensuring the safety of the people of Bahrain and in combating COVID-19. He also praised the cooperation and full awareness of the people of Bahrain in this regard and praised their unity. The Council then discussed a draft law on regulating and monitoring international trade regarding endangered species and animals to, to plants. The Interior Minister General Sheikh Rasha bin Abdullah Al Khalifa chaired the weekly meeting of the Interior Ministry which was held online. He was briefed on the work progress in all security sectors and efforts to meet requirements and overcome challenges that could affect performance. He expressed pride and gratitude in the cooperation of citizens and residents for following safety and general order measures. He affirmed that their commitment represents their awareness of the importance of those steps to combat the coronavirus. He expressed appreciation to the Interior Ministry's directorates in dealing with the current situation and the protection of the security and safety of all. He called for the continuation to perform duties as part of the national campaign against the coronavirus. 
the Education Ministry launched the Interactive Lessons Service in the presence of Education Minister Dr. Majid Naimi. The new service provides a central unified lesson for students within Teams application. The minister confirmed the importance of having the diverse ways of learning so that students can continue studying at home and interact with their teachers. He praised the efforts of teachers, specialists, school administrators in doing their best to ensure a good education for all students. The official spokesman for coalition forces in Yemen, Colonel Turki Malki, said that the Royal Saudi Air Defense Forces intercepted and destroyed two ballistic missiles that were launched by the terrorist Houthi militias from Sana'a and Sa'da towards civilians and civilian objects in the kingdom. Colonel Malki stated that the two ballistic missiles were launched towards the city of Riyadh and the city of Jazan, affirming that there were no casualties. He added that the interception of the missiles caused some sharp note to fall on some residential neighborhoods in Riyadh and Jazan cities. Saudi Arabia confirmed four new coronavirus deaths, bringing the total to eight today uh, amid 1,299 confirmed cases with 96 new ones. The Saudi Health Ministry spokesman said that 12 people are currently in the intensive care unit in critical condition. He added that 66 people recovered. Saudi Arabia tightened its restrictions on movements aimed at slowing the spread of the coronavirus in the kingdom. According to a statement from the Ministry of Interior, residents in Saudi Arabia are banned from entering or exiting the Jeddah governorate as of today in an effort to slow the spread of the virus. The UAE's Ministry of Health and Prevention has confirmed 63 new cases of COVID-19. The new cases bring the total in the country to 468 with 55 recoveries and two deaths. The government launched a coronavirus drive through test zone where residents would be able to get tested for COVID-19 while in their cars. Meanwhile, the national disinfection program was extended until April 5th, requiring all people to stay in their homes between 8 p.m. and 6 a.m. People wishing to go outside during the curfew hours will need to apply for a special permit online. Amman has recorded 15 new coronavirus cases, bringing the total number of infected patients in the country to 167. Five of the registered patients have been in contact with coronavirus cases, eight were linked to travel, and the remaining two are under investigation. The ministry has also confirmed the recovery of 23 cases and urged everyone to follow its instruction with regards to social distancing. And now we move to Yasmeen for the latest in business news. Thank you, Hamid. A very good evening. You're watching the business news on Bahrain International with me, Yasmeen Ibrahim. Bahrain Oil Share Index has closed at 1,362,000.41 points, marking a decrease of 26.36 points below the previous closing. This decrease was due to the fall in the commercial bank sector, investment sector and services sector. 59 equity transactions took place with a volume of 2,003,877 or 331,840 Bahraini dinars. Investors traded mainly in the services sector, representing 52.28% of the 28% of the total value of securities traded. Saudi Arabia has sold more than 15 billion Saudi rials in Islamic bonds as the kingdom seeks to develop its local debt market. The kingdom's finance ministry said that it had closed the book to investors on its March 2020 rial program. The total amount raised by the sale was 15,568 billion US dollars. Gulf oil exporters are increasingly turning to debt sales to help fund spending in a low oil price environment, while at the same time developing their own capital markets as part of the ongoing diversification reforms.
As the coronavirus pandemic that originated in Wuhan went global, thousands of factories in China turned to a new and very profitable market, face masks for exports. The factory with five production lines in northeastern China made the much-needed face masks, which were huge in demand as infection numbers surged. The first two months of the year, 8,950 new manufacturers started producing masks in China. The high levels of mask production has dramatically pushed up prices for raw materials materials needed to make them. Russia's Rosneft has transferred its assets in Venezuela to a company fully owned by the Russian government in a move intended to shield Russia's largest oil producers from U.S. sanctions. The sale announced on Saturday follows the recent sanctioning of two subsidiaries in an effort to cut a critical lifeline that Russia extended to the Venezuelan president after the U.S. government made it illegal for Americans to buy crude from Venezuela. It did not name the new company that would take over the assets, which include multiple joint ventures, oil field services companies and trading activities. Lisbon taxi drivers are struggling to earn a living during Portugal's virus lockdown, with tourists long gone and locals are in mandatory or voluntary, voluntary quarantine. According to the Portuguese Taxi Federation, Lisbon has more than 3,000 registered taxi drivers from a total of 14,000 at a national scale. The president of the Taxi Federation said that the loss of drivers has already reached two-thirds. Portugal's government announced a financial support package following the state of emergency announcement that includes independent workers such as taxi drivers. And finally, before we conclude our business news for this evening, let's take a look at how stock markets around the world fared in daily trading. And that is it from the business desk. It's back to you, Mohammed. Thank you, Yasmin. Communities in the UK are rallying to support medical workers by providing meals for the staff as the coronavirus outbreak puts increased pressure on the country's health service. More in this report. Another donation towards the fight against COVID-19. Not face masks or ventilators, but food. A South London cakery is donating baked goods. They'll be delivered to frontline medical workers at the nearby St. George's Hospital. It just seemed automatic for us to find something to do in order to be able to spread a little bit of happiness and cheer in this time. And so I was just scrolling through Twitter and I saw that um, the yeah, Critical NHS had this post up there and they're like, we're getting restaurants to come and, and give food for the staff and thought that's just an amazing idea. Just over a week ago, a married couple founded a group called Support NHS Critical Care Staff. The aim is to raise money and food to feed critical care nurses and other frontline staff at the South London Hospital. What began with just 20 pizzas has now grown to over $43,000 of online donations from as far as Australia and the United States. Within two hours we had 20 pizzas sent to them. By the time we got back delivering them, there was 600 quid in there. Then it was 1,000, then yeah. it was 2,000. <laughs> and it's just going from there. And that's literally, it's less than six days ago. Now we're sitting with 32,000 in, in a fund. But the whole aim is it's not just about feeding the nurses. It's about putting the money back into the community. It's been donated by the community to support the nurses so that they don't have to think about what you know, where their next meal is coming from when they're on a ward. So many people are out there and they're saying, well, we want to help in some way. We want to do something. We're sit around. What can we do? It's very difficult. The, the, the hospitals can't just accept donations coming in through the door from anybody. No. Everything we've done, everything we deliver has come through kitchens and services that are already health checked and yeah. we, we have to it's deliver at a priority. we've learned that we have to deliver at very very specific health standards temperatures etc so it's been a very steep learning curve <laughs> we were sat on the sofa thinking last week last wednesday god we don't have a golf travel business anymore <laughs> now we're running a, a small ngo nearby mustard foods usually produces over 30 tons of food a week for high street restaurants in the uk and further a field. Then the coronavirus outbreak hit and orders collapsed. Now Mustard is making daily meals for frontline medical staff. Volunteers pick up the food and drive that delivery to the hospital. The group is now supplying breakfast, lunch and dinner to medical staff there. 
Two weeks ago we were producing 30 tonnes of food a week for 32 restaurant groups across the UK, or largely across the UK, but we also distribute into Portugal, Dublin and the likes of France and Germany, about 10-15% of our production, and um, with immediate effect that vanished. So the following week we were down to probably five tonnes and left no choice but to dream up some new ideas. I said, look, yeah, 32 plus tonnes a week we can do. So uh, a couple of hundred nurses on the front line is easy. Let's scale it out. Let's look after some other hospitals. So we're now building the model to, uh, to scale. This initiative aims to honor the work and efforts exerted by medical workers and their role in ensuring the health and safety of all.